Hello guys, we're back with a new exciting topic. We will talk about design review based on failure mode, abbreviated as DRBFM. As an introduction, we would like you to know the history of DRBFM and where did it come from, what's used for, and so on. So we have a lot of tools in uh, engineering and production lines and um, in any kind of product uh, development facility. We have an FMEA tool and we have DRBFM tool. FMEA stands for failure mode and effects analysis and DRBFM is design review based on failure mode. So FMEA was uh, created by the US Army and developed for automotive industry by Ford Motor Company. Then later, after a couple of years, somebody came with uh, the concept of DRBFM, which is a part of FMEA. Those tools are used as quality assurance tools, change captures, make sure you go from a product that's developed in level A to a product that's developed to a higher level, let's say level B, without losing the quality of that product and making sure that the steps of development are going in the right direction and you're not losing anything along the way. So DRBFM was developed by Dr. Yoshimura from Toyota Motor Company. Uh, back in time, they start to develop tools and uh, forms in order to uh, succeed in DRBFM and ended up being a success tool for Toyota in order to ensure quality. Uh, probably you know that Toyota products are quality products and uh, they are out racing a lot of companies because they are firmly applying the concept of the RBFM. So hopefully through those lectures, you'll, you'll learn how to apply those tools in your facility. Either you are a manager or you are a people's leader or even if you're an engineer. So DRBFM is a mindset, uh, not only a tool. So you can apply it in any field in your life. So you can see uh, DRBFM is part of preventive maintenance. A couple of steps that you follow in order to avoid any kind of failures along the way. What you do, you mainly capture changes when you go as I said, from product one to product two, which is a more advanced product than the previous one, you want to make sure during the change and development process, you are not losing any important details and you avoid as much as possible of surprises along the way to be able to deliver the product on time and with the quality expected. So usually companies are driven by change. Change means opportunity and at the same time it means a challenge. Let's say you are building a car, you have been building that car for, for hundreds of years and you know the tires are working fine, the engine, transmission and drivetrain are working just fine. Why would I change? Well, because the demand in the market is changing. So you want to make sure you keep following that and following the competition as well. So change is opportunity to, to gain more customers and to have a, a well-designed product while at the same time it's a challenge. You want to make sure you want to go to that new change and adapt it in your product uh, without running into problems and losing your customers instead of gaining them. So as we know, change in the market is a must to stay alive. If you don't change, then you will be changed. Either you are a manufacturer or even if you are an employee. I mean, you need to change, you need to adapt new tools, you need to adapt new knowledges and so on to keep moving forward and to be as productive as possible. In terms of products, let's say automotive products or electronic products, any kind of product, you need to change to meet the customer's demand. That's how it works. So the, DB, the, the DRBFM makes sure that the change will be delivered without losing quality. So. DRBFM is a tool of quality, in the same time it's a tool of engineering and a mindset as we will learn as moving forward. So the, object, the objectives in this course, um, we will understand why we use DRBFM and need to know how to implement the DRBFM in an efficient way. Then you need to determine the best practices and most benefic beneficial techniques in holding DRBFM practices. 
The outline of the course will be, first we will go through overview and the value of DRBFM. Why are we doing DRBFM? Why is it important? How does learning DRBFM help me as an engineer or as a manager or even as a CEO of a company? Then we will learn in details what is the DRBFM approach and how it is done. Then we will learn how to prepare and uh, how to use the support tools and exercises uh, to get familiarized with the process. Then we will talk about the design review participants list and how you create that list and how you choose the design review participants. Then we will talk about uh, the DRBFM resources and uh, the when and how concerns appear. That's one golden point. How do you allocate concerns? How do you know this is a concern? This is not uh, through your change and going through those details. Then the design actions taken to prevent the concern and um, eventually how to hold the DRBFM meetings and the design review guidelines. Then we will end the course uh, with a summary of what we talked about and uh, an example and forms of DRBFM to be able to familiarize, familiarize yourself with the process and uh, be a successful DRBFM implementer in your facility.